What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn how to set up SSH key authentication on a server and how to then connect to the server using a private key and not a password. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn how to set up SSH key authentication on a server in this video today, which means that we're going to be able to authenticate ourselves using a private key rather than a password. And the only thing that you need for this video is some sort of server that you can use. You can use a virtual machine on your computer. You can use uh, any other computer in your local network if you have one. Uh, you can use a server that you rented online. You can use MultiPass, which I recently made a video on. It doesn't really matter. You just need some server uh, where you can set up the authentication so we can put the public key. So the idea is we're going to generate a key pair, a private key and a public key. And the public key is like uh, the public information that everyone can have that is um, what is needed to check if something is you, if some key belongs to you or not. So the public key is public information. You can put it on a website, you can put it on Twitter, it doesn't matter, everyone can have it. Uh, and it's actually good if people have it because then they can authenticate or that they can check if you are the person trying to connect. And a private key is secret information that only you have and it's the only thing that is going to, um, to, to authenticate you as the person that the public key belongs to. So the public key is like a checking tool and the private key is the thing that the checking tool is going to recognize as being the correct thing that allows for uh, the connection. So that's the basic idea. And what we're going to do first is we're going to open up the terminal and create such a key pair. If you don't have one, you can also reuse an existing one if you have one. Uh, and I'm going to create here a new directory. Let's call it key directory. Doesn't really matter. Uh, and in this directory here, I'm going to generate a key pair. SSH key gen is the command. Uh, and then I can do, uh, I can provide a path. So I'm going to call this now my, uh, my connection key. And uh, then I can use a passphrase if I want to. So I can uh, secure this with a passphrase. I'm going to leave this empty for this video. Uh, the only thing that happens here is that if you provide a passphrase in order to be able to use the key, you need to provide a password so you can protect it like that. I'm going to just leave that uh, empty for the sake of this video. And then I get two things. I get the my connection key and the my connection key dot pub. And this is the public key. You need to somehow get this onto the server to signal to the server that this is the corresponding key. Uh, to some private key that the server, of course, doesn't know, but this is the um, corresponding key, which is going to allow you to check if the connection is coming from the correct person, from the cor uh, correct key. Um, so for this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use multi-pass again. Again, it doesn't matter what you use. You can just connect to your server using SSH and use SCP, which I also made a video about recently to get your public key onto the server. You can use FTP. You can also put your key on a website and then go to the server and download it from the website. It doesn't really matter. You just need to somehow get your public key onto the server. And uh, this can be done using SCP if you already have a connection. Uh, again, I have a video on this or in the case of multipass, if you want to do this on a virtual machine here, you can just use the command multipass transfer, which is just going to transfer the file using the multipass command. So uh, multipass list in my case is already a machine here. Again, all you have to do to create a multipass instance, if you don't have one is multipass launch and uh, then a name. So dash dash name and some name. Um, and in my case now, I'm going to just use the existing one. So multi pass transfer. And uh, then I'm going to use the path to this directory here. So home uh, neural nine desktop key directory, and I'm going to upload the public key. So my connection key dot pub. And this is going to be uploaded to some name, which is the machine. So the name of the virtual machine here. And I'm going to upload this to home Ubuntu because that's the default user here and then dot SSH. If the directory doesn't exist, you have to create it in the case of root. It's just root slash dot SSH. Uh, and again, this is just the way I did it for the video. It doesn't matter how you do it. You can also connect to the server and do a w get command to download it from somewhere. You just have to get somehow this key onto the server into the SSH directory. Uh, and then you need to also connect to the server, for example, using a password or by already being physically present at the server. Maybe you have a keyboard there uh, or by doing anything else that gets, gets you a connection to the server. In my case, it's a multi pass shell command um, on some name. And now I'm on the server. So 
The two things, again, I repeat what you have to do is you have to connect to the server somehow and you have to upload your key to the SSH directory here. So in my case now, you can see I have the myconnectionkey.pub file on the server. And all I have to do now to authenticate this or to authorize this key is I have to say cat my connection key. So read the content. In this case, it just reads the content. And then two angle brackets, two closing angle brackets or greater than signs. Uh, and I want to write this to the authorized keys file. So I get the content of this and I append it to the authorized keys file. It's very important that you use two angle brackets, not one, because otherwise you're just overriding all the authorized keys. You will want to use two to append the key to the already existing keys. Uh, and of course, create this file if it doesn't exist. So just run this command and then we can just exit. And what I can do now is I can connect using SSH. So I can say SSH and then... Um, just Ubuntu at or actually I need the IP address so multi pass list. Uh, I want to connect to this IP address so Ubuntu at 10.3.18166. In this case now it's not going to work because I don't have a public key. But if I provide dash I and then my connection key, which is the private key, then this is going to allow me to connect to the server without a password without anything. And I can also, of course, copy this connection so I can um, copy this key so I can copy the private key uh, to my user directory .ssh. And I can do the same thing actually with the uh, public key. So like this, um, and I'm not sure if I have to restart my shell, but then I can or I should be able to just say multi pass uh, list to get the IP address and then SSH and then a bunch to at 10.3.1866. And this connects me automatically because it recognizes the key in my SSH directory. Uh, that's the basic idea here. Now I can take this one step further and add a configuration to my uh, known hosts file. Uh, I think that's the that's the correct file. Uh, or actually, it's the config SSH file, I think. Uh, so we need to go to dot SSH. And here I have the config file. So if I go into config, there are a couple of things that I have to censor here. Um, but what you see here is I have a bunch of hosts to find. And what I can do now is I can add a new entry. So let me just resize this a little bit. Um, I'm going to add here host, and I'm going to call this local dash Ubuntu. And then I'm going to say the user that I want to use for the connection is Ubuntu. And the host name is the IP address. So just run a multi pass list again, copy this IP address here and then just pass it here. And that is basically it. So I can then close this clear, uh, exit, rerun this. And then I should be able to just say SSH local Ubuntu. And there you go, it connects me to the server because now I have an alias in my config. So this is how you can easily set up uh, SSH key authorization on a server. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.